So Wayne, I'm really excited to talk about Wolf Garden. Um, I actually watched the movie today and oh my God, it was so tension filled and exciting. I just couldn't stop keeping my eyes off it. It was such a great movie and I loved everything. Like you did such a great job. I mean, you did everything practically in the film and great job. Thank you. No, it was, um, yeah, it's been a, it's been a long kind of two years to get it to, uh, to the point it's at where we are actually releasing, uh, in a few weeks time. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, as I say, sort of starting off, um, you know, bringing it to fruition with, uh, with lockdown, it was kind of, we had another film we were going to shoot just before lockdown happened back in 2020. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when it all happened, it was just kind of like, you know, there's a lot of time for it. Well, we all had a lot of free time to do things. And I just tried to, tried to get writing, you know, writing something and, and doing something different to what we had, uh, trying to do something that would, that would fit with the, you know, with the situation we're in trying to, trying to film in these times, you know, sort of a, a one location horror movie and, but trying to do something different, you know, and, and I think this is always my thing as a, you know, as a first time director as well, you want to try and, um, just do something a little bit different. And uh, we, we went for that with this, just trying to do a sort of a, a, a romantic tragedy wrapped in a, in a werewolf psychological kind of vibe. So there's a few sort of different themes going on in there, but it's, uh, yeah, I think the suspense thriller would be, be the way to describe it. Exactly. And my first question is, how did you come up with the idea for this? Because I know you're, you're credited as the writer, obviously. But how did how did you get the idea of the whole werewolf mystique and, you know, how did you bring that all in? Like, who are your influences? Yeah, I mean, I think the idea was, I mean, as I said, it, it sort of came out of this this lockdown situation of trying to do the one location horror. And I kind of, you know, I toyed with different different ways we could do things. And um, I actually I actually did a, a, a short film. One of my first short films I did was kind of about a guy locked in his flat with a you know, an AI, like an art, you know, artificial intelligence, like a, an Alexa type thing. And, you know, I was toying with sort of doing that. And I thought about a few other things. And then I just thought, well, you know, I've always, you know, horror is my, my first, my, my first short film was horror. So I'm, you know, it's very close to my heart, horror films. And um, I've always kind of thought I'd really like to do a werewolf love story, I guess, in, in, you know, I never thought of doing it the way it turned out. It, there was, you know, because there was a, a variety of different things we had to sort of think about to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I just kind of thought about, you, you know, an obvious influence in there. Probably, well, what I would say is my favourite werewolf movie is uh, An American Werewolf in London. Uh, you know, I love, love that film. Actually, just funnily enough, I just watched it yesterday again. It's kind of a, it's strange to watch it after having made a made a my own werewolf film now so it's um yeah the influence is in there and it's kind of almost like the story sort of picks up at, you could say it's sort of i wouldn't call it a spiritual sequel so much as that that idea of you know what would happen if you got you know the events after that you know had had that film not ended the way it had how would how would things how would things go you know what, what would they right. do would they go into hiding kind of thing and I, you know, I thought a bit about that and I thought about the isolation thing and, um, you know, not wanting to do it too much to death because everyone's lived through that in the last few years. Uh, but yeah, I think that was, that was a, a big thing for me and just the script slowly developed over time. And I think that was the thing. They kept sort of being these opportunities like we were going to shoot it and then it didn't happen. And I got to sort of rewrite it and rework it. And, and um, you know, the, the other influences I would say would probably be the Shining is is quite a big one. I'm a huge fan of that film. That's awesome. And um, and Vertigo as well. I say uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo, uh, just just for the way you know. There's that tragic romance element to it, and the fact that the you know the guy the guy in that loses his mind, and there's this idealized vision of the woman he loves, he thinks he loves, and is and I tried to sort of there's those themes sort of floating around in there. I think. That's awesome. And I got to tell you something, man. Uh, Sean Altman is one of my new favorite actresses. I've seen her in a couple of films like Croc and Fire Nato as of late. And I think she has what it takes to become a genre favorite. And, you know, you got to, you know, she's your she's your love interest in this one. And so I want to know what was it like working with her on this? Yeah, no, it, it was great. I mean, you know, she just she gets it. She's, um, you know, she's one of those actresses. She just kind of, she, she just brings it because uh, obviously, you know, we, we shot this in, um, you know, it's 15 days we shot it in 
and it was just kind of like everything was very you know we had to be really on it and and you know sean just brought it, it were, you know, the, the emotional angles of it having there's a lot of well you, having seen the film you know it's, you know there's a lot of kind of emotional moments in there we sort of get the sweet the sweeter parts of their relationship that that sort of everyday uh love story but you've also got the really traumatized uh you know horrified moments of it and and as i said you know she's she's perfect for the role she's great and it's very easy to work with her we you know i think we had a nice chemistry and that really i think with you know i think that's so important to the to the film is that there's a, a, a that chemistry um because without that you can't have you can't have that you know the tragedy isn't there if you don't buy into that's that wrong, sort of relationship yeah. and that and that idealized as i say that idealized version of the woman he loves you know you want your audience to put you know fall in love with the character so it's kind of yeah and she she really brought good uh, yeah right definitely in. i mean you i mean when you two are walk, like doing your little hike there in the you know op beginning opening moments i mean that was really that's when really i start to feel you guys like you know all you know this is a great couple i know that you're you know you go through your stuff but um just the way you guys present yourselves just made it what it was and that was a great um it did it did drive the film it, it definitely was a major major point of the film and it, i think it worked yeah no i think we we got very i mean we got very lucky with a lot of things really but i do think um something like this it is more of a sort of a character piece as well you you kind of you're looking for great performances so it's um and, and obviously grant as well uh grant masters who was the visitor oh yeah just, you know he knocked it out of the park completely his his bits it's he's just scared, kind of he scared fun. the crap out of me at times so i'm not gonna lie he really did because that's that's what we want yeah absolutely. yeah exactly um, it, it, you succeeded on that level totally absolutely i you know and i think any of these sort of films they're, they're only as good as their their uh their anti i should say their antagonist so it's kind of like you having that character in there and some of those scenes. I mean, you know, it was, it was a, a, a pleasure to work. Well, a pleasure to work with both of them. But yeah, with, with Grant, it was a, those those little back and forth scenes. It was really some really nice stuff in there. Yeah, I, it was like I felt it was a juxtapositioning of your romance with Sean's character and then the heart, the terror part with Grant Grant's character. And I was just like, holy crap! Like it just kept me wanting to keep going. Like, what's gonna happen next? It just kept me going. What's gonna happen next? What's gonna happen next? So that that's what I like. I like that that slow tension build up and then boom when it hits you it hits you that was like yeah. fantastic great no no great I, I think it's um with with those dialogue scenes it was very important we tried to just keep it very grounded and real and just that you know the conversation back and forth and you you probably noticed as well we didn't put too much emphasis on on music for those scenes it was kind of very important just to have that you know that we're we're there very present with what's going on yeah so you mentioned that you shot the film in 15 days and um so were there any complications during production such as like location or something <laughs> but it was like that you yeah. felt like yeah. oh my god i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get this done <laughs> i i could make a movie out of um the, yeah <laughs> the experience <Just> <laughs> um yeah i mean you know i, I always imagine it's kind of like uh, you know everyone always says making a movie is is can be absolute nightmare like for a first time filmmaker but you know to sort of I, I i was juggling more than a few roles in there and it was kind of uh you know i think you get a lot of the usual things you know like locations drop out we had to replace people um yeah just just probably a lot of this stuff that happens to everyone but then of course we had the backdrop of uh covid mm -hmm. so um you know when you start getting covid cases and it's uh you know it's, it was there were certainly days when it looked like we were we weren't going to get any further. I remember coming home to my fiance and sort of just saying, "I think, I think I've ruined my life. I think it's all over." <laughs> it's kind of it got that kind of desperate at points, you know. That were we going to finish this film? And every day it was just kind of getting a few more scenes shot. You kind of uh, and there's that, that that Russian roulette thing of taking that COVID test every morning, you know, because at, at the end of the day we we did have people get covid um but if i'd have got covid it would have been um disastrous <laughs> been you're, game over, you're lead, yeah because you're you're the lead also so uh, you know and not just a director but you're also the lead so it would have it would have been a hard one to work around for sure yeah. <laughs> so uh yeah no so um but yeah no I, as i said i mean I, I give full credit to the crew everyone worked really really hard to to you know they stuck with it and it was it was tough times to to get where we did where we did 
Um, and I think a lot of the time, with me and the, the director of photography, we kind of joked about Blade Runner. We always said about how Blade Runner went, you know, the, it, was a, it was a very troubled shoot, but then they got a great movie out of it. So we kept saying this, this will be our, well, <laughs> yeah. Your Blade maybe, Runner. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't go that far. That's yeah, like, I would say, yeah. I, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, like I have to agree. It was more like American World from London meets The Shining. I'd say I, that I think you just best described it earlier for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, it was, it's, uh, there's a few miracles happened along the way. And I think as well, considering we shot, well, it's actually just over a year ago, we shot it in January in the UK. And, um, you know, obviously January is very cold in the UK, but, you know, the weather, the rains, snow, all, all of this stuff. We didn't have any. We had one day with this little tiny bit of rain, but we managed to get three dry weeks in January. And um, it wasn't even, I mean, everything else kind of went wrong, but the weather was good. So, you know, for a film that was kind of, you know, I think probably about 60% of the of the shots were, were outside. We were very lucky. I mean, we didn't even have strong winds or anything to, you know. Wow. So That's, was, I, that, is, that is totally a miracle. I totally agree with you on that. No, I, I, I can't I can't quite believe that show. I mean, because how extreme the weather's been this January, I keep looking out the window and thinking, my God, if this was a t this time a year ago, it would have been a very, very different story. So, yeah, for uh, sure. The, the universe was looking after us, I think, there, for sure. That's awesome. So now that you got Wolf Garden coming out soon, are there are you going back, are you doing another feature film down the road? Like, what's what's next for you that you can talk about? Um. Well, I mean, I've got, there's a couple of projects I've got floating around. It's just kind of this thing as, as with all films, it's always comes down to the, the finance and the funding and, you know, getting things in place with that. So there's, there's, uh, there's two projects. There's one, uh, there's one that's another horror and there's one that's a, uh, like a drama sort of black comedy drama type thing. So um, really, I, I think that was the benefit of, of uh, lockdown is that I did get to do a lot of writing of my scripts and stuff. So you sort of build up, the slate of work so when someone does come along who wants to work with you you can say well you know pick a project and we'll do that that's awesome i th I think wolf garden is going to be your stepping stone into getting getting a horror fan base for sure because i think people are going to enjoy that that whole werewolf meets psychological horror stuff plus the tragic romance i think i, I have a feeling that wolf garden is going to be your your ticket to getting to getting uh love from the, the horror fam and i you know you got mine already because i love this movie Thank so, you. No, I appreciate that. I'm hoping people will get to see it. When's the release date again for those those ones? Uh, it is the 28th of February. That's for the US release. So that's awesome. So I hope everyone gets to check out Wolf Garden on the 28th of February. And Wayne, you did an excellent job. I can't wait to see what's next for you for the for the genre and your even your comedy drama. I want to see what's going to come up from that next. But thank you so much again for taking the time to talk about Wolf Garden. I hope it becomes a success. No, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me on. It's great, great chatting to you. All right. Everyone take care and have a good day. Thanks, you too. Take care. All right.